Good afternoon, everyone. I'm welcome you to Ripley County. Here at all's good. A couple of maintenance items I want to do. There's some water up here in this little blue bucket, if, uh, if you guys would like water. And around the hallway is the restroom. Um, I don't take a lot of time. You guys want to hear from the state right now, but uh, rather quickly, um, SEGA is Southeast Indiana Growth Alliance, which are five counties down here in Southeast Indiana. Um, for this project, I think we're going to have Union County be in addition to this, for this project specific. Um, SEGA has been around a long time. It only made sense that the five counties down here look at this um, as something viable for our region. Um, quickly, if we would, so that uh, so that everybody in the room knows where everybody is. Um, Mike, if you'd like to start off, just introduce you yourself and kind of go around the room real quick. Sure. Uh, Mike Perlberg, one Dearborn, the local economic development organization for Dearborn County. Uh, Mike Perlberg, I'm the mayor of Mark Perry from Aurora. Derek Walker, city manager in Aurora. Brian Patterson, Franklin County Council. John Palmer, Franklin County Council. Hey, anyone, it's State Representative District 68. Mark Gar, uh, Deputy Clerk, City Rise, and Senate. Ron Eats, I'm with Ivy State Community College. Lynn Grammary, City of Morrisburg. Susan Trey, Southeast Community Energy. Mary, I'm with Southeast Community Energy Planning. Roxanne Meyer, of the Sales Town Council. Brady, Senator County. Uh, Susie Swain, Switzerland County. John Bonds, Switzerland County Economic Development. Bobby Hassman, um, Clark Patrick Milan. Bud Price, uh, Steel Superintendent, I love it. Metro Penn County, Napoleon. Simon Bender, Gable County Redevelopment Commission. John Myers, uh, South Dakota Small Business Development. This is Brad Bell, that's great. Small Development. Paul Irving, the Expo Business Council. Harris Snyder, Southeast Indiana, United Way. Alan Weiss, Mayor of Green Hill, Michael Swedler, one year more in that Joe Bagan, IEC. Trevor Lane, IEC. So, Trevor, can you hear okay back there? Is it too loud? Is the right volume? All right, great. Well, first thing I want to do is, is uh, thank um, IEC for putting this project together. And for them coming down to explain a few things to us. Again, this was rather quick for us. We are not RDA, but the closest thing is the regional group that we have together, which is why we started this. We've got a lot of partners in the room we want to recognize. Um, but again, without taking up all the time for saving in, I'd like to introduce Mark Walski from IEDC, and he'll be doing a presentation for you guys. Thank you, Gary, and I uh, want to thank all of you for um, inviting the IDC to come down today to talk about um, a new, really exciting initiative that uh, was uh, created with the support of our partners in the General Assembly this past session, uh, really building on um, kind of the foundation that was established with the Regional Cities Initiative, was ultimately carried forward with uh, the 21st Century Talent Region work uh, led by then Secretary Milo. Um, and now is, is really, um, you know, the, the next opportunity for Indiana and, and hopefully one that um, is able to uh, positively impact every community around the state, I think is the, the ultimate vision here. Um, and, and I'll kick off, I guess, the presentation itself with a little bit of background about why this idea of talent attraction and retention remains critically important for the IEDC and, and what we see as for the state. Um, more generally, um, and Mike, if you want to move to the next slide, um, the, the first two we'll just click through is kind of the history and, and the success that we've seen in, in supporting economic development across the state over the last couple of years. Um, as of just June 11th, uh, a week and a half or so ago, uh, the IUC is on track to have another record-breaking year, which um, you know is impressive considering the, the challenges that we've all faced over the course of the last 14 to 18 months, uh, but but Indiana continues to be seen as, as one of the best places in the country for businesses to locate and expand their operations. Um, if you want to go to the next one, um, but 
but what we've seen is just in the last four years, uh, the IDC has been able to secure nearly 100,000 commitments from businesses locating and expanding their operations here. 80% of those are from businesses that are already here today, um, but are, are seeing opportunities for growth in the state. Uh, but, but we know that, you know, that 100,000 jobs coming here over the course of the next couple of years is only in addition to the over 100,000 jobs that we know um, are open today and employers are looking to fill those. Uh, so that's really why um, you know, this, this idea of talent attraction and retention uh, by focusing on um, investments in quality of place and, and making uh, your communities attractive places for people to live, work, and, and play in uh, remains really important for the state of Indiana. Uh, so to do that, um, and, and really, again, the objective of this initiative, if you want to go to the next slide, um, is to accelerate the state's population growth by attracting and retaining more people in the state, ultimately uh, realizing net migration um, increases in Indiana. And to do that, um, you know, again, with our partners in the General Assembly, uh, plan to invest up to $500 million in um, regions across the state um, where, where communities come together, work with one another to develop a, a strategic vision for their future and outline the projects and steps that need to be implemented uh, to achieve that um, over the course of the next couple of years. So, I'm not sure if you want to go to the, next one. Uh, so the, the structure again um, is outlined here. We won't, won't dive too deeply into it because I think the, the main thing that we can focus on today is answering your questions. But uh, from what you'll see, it's, it's really this resembles um, you know, a similar structure to that which we um, implemented through regional cities, really encouraging your regional communities uh, to identify themselves, to figure out um, who you are connected with and why, using uh, to, to the extent that it's possible, um, data to understand you know, really the, the labor shed that that your community sit in as, as a way to, to help define what that region is, but also some of the other um, you know, historical connections that uh, your communities have with one another um, as a way to shape what that region is. Uh, once the region's been identified, um, that we encourage the, plan, the regions to form their plan uh, that outlines, again, the action steps and strategic lines of effort that you see as being important to be implemented with the ultimate goal of attracting people to, to your region. Um, and then, you know, based off of the uh, needs outlined in that plan, the IEDC will then um, will determine whether and to what extent that we will invest in helping your region move that plan forward. Uh, one thing that you'll see here very briefly at the end um, is this idea of sustainability um, in the effort, uh, both in terms of funding, um, you know, in, you know, by encouraging regions to think creatively about how you deploy the state's resources in the event that uh, the IDC makes a financial commitment to your region. Uh, so that way it's not just going out to projects and programs in the form of grants, but maybe investing in a way that brings some of that, if not all of that money back to the region to allow you to reinvest that money um, into other opportunities. Uh, but also um, to, to make the IEDC um, IEDC comfortable and, and, and understand that this region is going to continue to work with one another, um, you know, even after the, the state's money has been fully invested here over the course of the next couple of years. Uh, so to, to reiterate, really the goal of this again is to encourage regions to develop long-term strategic plans focused on attracting and retaining people in the state, um, really by helping you create communities that are seen as of, of particularly high quality, uh, that are, are attracted to people that are here today, because I think that that's one thing that, that maybe we don't highlight enough, is this initiative is as important for keeping people in your communities today as they are bringing people to the state of Indiana from outside our quarters. Uh, we, we know that um, rural and, and less urban areas of the state um, and their health and success are just as important as some of the other places in the state that may have been um, viewed as the focus of some of our other efforts. Uh, but we are trying to stress that it's not just about your urban centers, it's also about the health of the more rural areas of your region and, and of the state as well. Um, one thing that, that we are stressing with this, we did in the past, but it, we think that it's critically important to have what we've labeled your anchor institutions involved in the planning and implementation processes. Those could be the largest employers in the community, your school districts, you know, your higher education institutions, um, and, and, and community <laughs> foundations and the like. 
uh, to, to be engaged at the outset and, and you know, encouraged to continue to be involved as, as your region moves forward uh, for a couple of reasons. One, I mean, they have a selfish vested interest in the success of this region um, and making sure that their needs are understood and addressed through this process is important. The other is many of those organizations have been here for quite some time and will continue to be here um, in the event that any one of us in this room um, you know, move on to another uh, community opportunity, whatever it may be. So it does provide some stability uh, for the region as, as you move the plan forward. So really encouraging your, your anchor institutions to be involved in this. So for eligible communities, as, as Gary mentioned in, in his opening remarks, um, the, the first part may not necessarily apply to this region and that you don't have a regional development authority. Um, but one thing that we learned from regional cities is not every community in the state um, is ready for regional development authority or is a good fit for that structure. So we have tried to provide some flexibility to communities across the state to identify what organization, what nonprofit organization, um, if an RDA is, is a good fit, would be the vehicle through which we're able to make the investment. Um, part of it is just ease of operations for the state. We have one agreement with your region that we can get the money in, into, into projects through, uh, but also it helps um, serve as kind of that the coordinating body and, and the organization that's able to bring together that diverse group of stakeholders um, and ultimately move, move the region forward. So within the plans, we mentioned plans, um, you know, quite a lot, and, and a lot of it is, you know, it includes not just this is who we are and a description of what you want to be, um, a, a, an identification of these are the measures that, that we're going to uh, benchmark ourselves against um, and, and an outline of the overall goals and objectives of the region, uh, but also the projects that are included to, to help you get there. It's not just the where you want to be, but but how you do that. Um, and some of those project ideas, again, continue to focus on quality of life and quality of place, much like regional cities. Um, those, you know, those investments into your uh, cities, towns, and, and, and rural areas that help create that high quality of place that people want to be in. Uh, but we also know that um, you know, across the state, um, but especially in those that may have been making these investments over the last couple of years, there are other things that help bring people and, and keep people within your cities and towns. So all, so we're also looking to not just invest in brick and mortar construction projects, but also other maybe intangible programs or initiatives specifically focused on innovation and promoting entrepreneurship. Um, as well as other talent development and, and attraction efforts. Um, you know, one thing I always try and highlight here um, by saying, you know, we're asking you to put together a comprehensive plan. Um, you know, one that is not just focused narrowly on one project or issue. Um, and, and in doing so, um, you know, by ask, asking your different stakeholder groups to work together, it'd be a little bit hypocritical if the state didn't do the same. Uh, so the IEC has been working with our partners across state government that may have other funding alternatives um, for a trails project or broadband or, or, or other opportunities to see if we can coordinate with them to possibly utilize some of those alternative resources for projects included in your plan to allow the commitment that the state makes to ready to go towards projects that may not have funding alternatives at the state level. So really what, what we would hope and, and our goal through this is that it's not just a $500 million initiative for Indiana, it grows into something more. Um, and and you know, that, that's really, I think, an, another example of a, of a positive impact of this um, project is to make sure that we aren't just doing one-off things um, from the state level in terms of the commitments that we're making, but really making sure that if we're able to invest in an economic development project in Southeast Indiana, how is that related to and coordinated with some of the other investments that, that the state is making, hopefully increasing and, and broadening the overall impact of, of that investment in an economic development project. So I just wanted to highlight that and encourage the region to, to not just think about maybe these three areas, um, but also you know, if there are other issues or projects that um, the region sees as being tied to improving place and talent attraction and retention, 
to not be discouraged from including that in the plan, because there could still be an opportunity for the IEC and, and, and the state to help move that forward. And finally, um, we'll wrap things up and then um, open the floor to any questions that you have. It's really a, a quick run through on, on the timing of this. Um, you'll see that it is very aggressive um, and, and we're, really, we're moving quickly. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. One is you know that there are some areas around the state that have been um, you know, working on this, this effort for the last couple of years now and are prepared to move forward pretty quickly and we didn't want to slow them down. Um, we also know that some other areas of the state may need a little bit more time. So while this is the expectation today and our open goal is to have regions submitting plans to the IEDC by August 31st, we are open to working with uh, you if you do need more time uh, to make sure that the, the product that you're able to pull together is something that you're proud of and that the state would be comfortable investing in at the end of the day. Uh, so again, this is you know the expectation and, and we hope that every area around the state, every region is able to meet the timeline as it is today. Uh, but we are encouraging you to keep a very open line of communication with the IEC so we know where you are in this process. And if we need to make modifications one way or the other, um, and we can explore how we might be able to do that. Uh, but as you see, um, on May 3rd, we launched the initiative um, and asked for regions around the state to identify themselves and, and signal to the IEDC their intent to participate in this initiative. Um, there is an opportunity by July 1st, uh, when you do submit um, you know, that indication or, or notice to the IEDC to request some funding support from the state to help with the planning process. Um, we've, we've made $50,000 available to each region that is participating in this uh, with, with like the initiative itself, a match expectation there. Uh, but if there has been other planning efforts underway, um, you know, while we would love to see dollars come to the table to match the state's dollars, we know that some of these expenditures have already been again, underway. Um, and if that planning work is going to be used in part as the basis for um, participation in this initiative, uh, we would count that uh, prior investment by the region towards the match for this, um, the, the planning funds. Um, I neglected to mention, and I think it is important when thinking about match, um, I'll, I'll say two things. One, we don't expect the match in firm commitments from your regional partners to be at the table by August 31st. Um, we know that this is going to be a plan that's implemented over time. Um, you know, our vision is over the next three, five plus years is you know, the, the time horizon for when the plan is, is ultimately implemented. Uh, so if you're able to identify potential sources of funding that could be tapped into to be able to support the projects and initiatives included in the plan. Again, you don't have to have those firm commitments by the time that you submit submit your, your plan to the IEDC. Um, we, we can dive into the structure a little bit more, but, but really what we envision is as projects become ready for funding, as those commitments are secured, the region would be able to draw down effectively on the bank account with the IEDC um, as, as the funding is required. So I just wanted to stress that again with the accelerated timeline first and foremost, but but also with you know all of our regional development efforts, we know that this isn't something that's going to happen tomorrow. Um, in fact, we're we're encouraging regions to work quickly, uh, but thoughtfully and strategically. Um, you know, one thing that is in the back of our heads is five hundred million dollars leveraging you know four additional dollars to the state's investment is going to result in a lot of activity across the state. We know that there are cost pressures today. We don't want to be you know, directly responsible for the hyperinflation that could come about as a result of investing the money all at once. So um, you know, we are cognizant of that and, and ready to work with regions around Indiana to make the right investment at the right time. Um, in a way that's going to have the greatest impact for the region and for the state while not unnecessarily um, you know, increasing the overall costs. Again, hopefully to allow us to invest in even more projects than um, you know, may originally be outlined within, within the plan itself. So um, with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. I, I probably could anticipate some of them. I'm happy to jump right into that off the bat, but 
uh, we'll pause here and um, open the floor as well. But again, really do appreciate um, you know you inviting the IEDC to, to come down and join you today. Um, and if if there are questions today, questions that follow, um, really want to stress we want to be a resource. Um, at the end of the day, we want this to be successful. Again, for almost every, if not every community in Indiana, um, and asking a question is not going to lead to the IEDC saying. Uh, you have a question, we're upset, and we're not going to, you know, give you a fair shake. Um, and I think if if the governor had his way, every county in the state would find a way to participate in this. So we're we're trying to take that to heart uh, to make sure it becomes a reality. So that all set up. Thank you. So so uh, we do have a few people on the Zoom call. Um, I invite them to ask questions in the chat. But. One thing, Marty, if you clarify, if you have any more clarification since we spoke last, I know this is I can see London business of doing grants, so it's a learning curve for everybody. Things have changed and worked over time, just like you just spoke to. Is there any more clarification on the in kind services as far as the match? I did pick up on the preserving of the project that's being <clears throat> could be used for the conference plan and process now that could be used for like an in kind match. When it comes to the other side, what kind of in kind match reasonably? Can we, can we use for that? So I would say from um, you know cities and towns perspective, you know in kind could be you know if, if you you know donate land uh, to a trail project or you know to a um, you know, workforce housing development, the value, the fair market value of that land could be considered um, you know part of the local match. Um, you know, it's when we get into and this is where you know, I think we're going to have to look at it kind of on a case by case basis. Um, when we, you know, head into the programmatic type scenarios, um, you know, if, if we're looking at it from a, you know, we're dedicating staff time for employees that already are employed by, um, you know, a, a school district or something else to help manage a program. I think that that's where things get a little bit more challenging for us to consider that in kind. Um, but but if, you know, as part of this initiative, you have um, you know, an individual come on to help manage, you know, a couple of different programs and it's, you know, beyond what their, maybe their original job responsibilities, whereas we might be able to start to consider that as, as in-kind contributions. And then the other, I guess, is, um, and I use this just as an, as an example, not saying that this would be um, necessarily something that you would include in it, but, but from the private side, um, we can consider, you know, in-kind contributions, say there's, you know, a workforce development program and you're using um, a particular software from a company that is donating it to the region, um, you know, at a reduced rate or free of charge that so you're able to use the platform, but um, not necessarily to pay for it. We would, again, take the, what's the standard rate of that software license and include that as match. It doesn't have to be, you know, cash going into the project, although, you know, the cash obviously is easy to say, you know, this is clear match. Uh, one other thing on, on the local side too, um, you know, outside of in kind of, I apologize for getting away from this, Gary, but um, you know, we are taking a, a broad look at what that can be. It could be, you know, TIF abatement, um, you know, local tax revenues that you have that you're contributing to the project, uh, but also, um, you know, if if you're able to bring some of the stimulus funds um, that that your communities received, we're considering that to be local match as well. Uh, so just want to, that, that was one of those that has been coming up a bit and just want to make sure that we are clear. You know, I think that Indiana is a real opportunity, um, you know, like other states don't, one just because of the timing of this, um, to, to hopefully use this process to identify opportunities to invest those resources in a way that um, is going to be most impactful for your community and, and, and your residents um, in, in a way that's aligned with some of the other uh, things and activities that are going on. One of the things we spoke on, and a lot of this is talent attraction, you know, which means having capital to save India to our region. And if there were a lot of like, you know, housing that you can speak to, so if we were to do housing in John Palmer, can talk about this, John Palmer, that's not broadband. Um, for example, I know that REMC and Southeast Indiana Communications that are doing projects, can some of that be counted toward if it's actually on specifically for a new? 
subdivision mm -hmm. area. Yeah, and, and I, I think you know tying things like that together, and, and it gets kind of to the question of infrastructure. Um, and, and when we would be interested in you know, possibly using some of the ready dollars for this, as opposed to, you know, our, our first look will be, well, can we go to IFA using, you know, the utility fund that was created this past session? Are there other options that we can look to first? Um, is, is just how close that connection is between um, the, the actual infrastructure project, road, broadband, whatever it may be. I mean, that a lot of those are often you know, weighted towards public investment as opposed to private um, and say private development and using that, even though know, state resources aren't going into the housing development, if you're able to tie the two together and say, you know, the housing development couldn't happen without this other investment, and we can use that then as you know, essentially one project rather than as the infrastructure project and the plan and then this <coughs> other investment activity that happens um, you know, within the region. And, and, and I, I guess I, I say that and use an example here from regional cities as a way to say, you know, when, when looking at the match and I'll, I'll come back to something, hopefully I don't forget it. Um, but, but one example where you're able to say, okay, there's a, an infrastructure project that we are then able to use some of the other investment as, you know, Part of the match for the project is um, a road and sewer project that we were able to do down in Warwick County, Indiana, um, which ultimately was necessary to unlock hundreds of millions of dollars in the creation of a new medical campus um, from kind of three major hospital systems down in the area. We, we took that as that is really one project. So the you know, $10 million that the state committed to you know new road and sewer. And, and other connectivity was was tied to the hundreds of millions of dollars in private investment for those hospital systems as one project. Um, now, if if it would have been let's just build this road, and then you know eventually something will come along, that gets harder for us to consider that and hatch under the plan because it seems more like two very distinct projects rather than one connected um, you know project. So just food for thought when when thinking about. Um, you know how you how you can think about it and how the IEDC will look at um, the expectation for matching investment in, in the plan. Um, I guess the other thing I did want to mention uh, with that four to one expectation is, you know, we do know that other areas, you know, certain areas of the state have more capacity than others, um, and this isn't an all for nothing type of a scenario. Um, you know, if if it gets you know, it becomes apparent that finding $200 million in the next couple of years from various sources for projects in the plan, you know, to make that four to one match to unlock a full $50 million might not be possible. doesn't mean that the region is not one that we want to invest in. Um, and, and we will you know, work with you all to find out what's the right number, um, even if it's not all the way up to the $50 million, something less, the state may still very well want to commit resources um, you know, to see this region grow. Um, over the next couple of years. And I keep kind of remembering what I also wanted to say. I can't, something about the management. It is something about the management. It'll, it'll, it'll come to me. Um, so as you know, as Malek is in the room and you know, other folks who might, or probably, been, we've been educating our local electives around here, a lot of brainstorming around potential projects. Ideally, what level of planning or plan, pre-planning uh, or a ready eligible project should be completed at the end. Is, is, it a, is that a hard requirement? Is there's something on paper somewhere to show that this project is some degree of planning behind it, or are we what we new ideas? So I guess yes. Um, <laughs> and, and the reason why I, I guess I, I respond that way is one, the IEC has to have a, a fairly good idea about you know what we are investing in. Um, and and you know, it doesn't necessarily again have to be. We know, you know, at the corner of you know First and Main, there's going to be this development, and you know this is the developer we're going to use, and you know this is what it's going to be, and these are the resources that are going to be available. Um, but having examples of, you know, we know that you know, there is you know X amount of you know unmet housing need uh, within the community, and with that you can estimate for number of new units or single family, multi-family, whatever it is, could cost approximately you know, 
X millions of dollars. Um, and you know, based off of you know, our experience, we expect you know at least a certain amount coming from the private sources to develop it, but also you know, there may need to be you know this level of contribution from private or public sources to go into it. So have, I think that would be a baseline kind of what we we we'd be looking for. Um, but but obviously the more well thought out and developed, um, you know, the, the easier it is for us to see and understand um, you know, whether the plan can be successfully implemented. But I, I guess I, I say this with a, a caveat of, you know, again, we don't expect this to happen tomorrow. Um, and, and there may be some projects that are in the hopper that um, you know, are critically important for this region that have been under development, but you just haven't been able to, to figure out how you make the numbers work. And this could be an opportunity for that. Whereas others are, you know, longer term, you know, maybe not quite there, but you know, you want to make sure that it's included. Um, the, the other item, I, I guess, I should highlight there too is, um, you know, with the projects that you do include, um, you know, tying them to, to the overall vision, yeah, I think is is important too. Uh, so I just had the national pop back in my head. <laughs> Any other questions from the gallery? Are there any minimum requirements for the, the comprehensive strategic plan, or is it just kind of open ended? You guys just want to say, give us your best and we'll review it. So we have on um, our website, and I can share it with uh, the team for broader distribution, a, a set of a kind of plan guidelines, which outlines about 10 different you know, areas that we are going to expect to see. Uh, and that is, you know, who is your region? Why? You know, where are you today? Where do you want to go? What's the vision? And then kind of the list of the projects, as well as um, kind of the, the framework that the region's going to use to help evaluate and ultimately make the investment decision. So it's trying not to be too prescriptive, um, in part because, you know, one, Central Indiana, Indianapolis, the IDC, the state can't come in to Southeast Indiana and tell you, you know, these are your challenges, this is your problems, and this is how you're going to address it. Uh, we really are looking to you all to provide us with an understanding of what those opportunities are and provide us with, with the chance to help you help you solve. Can I ask a well, I guess I have a question. How many people in the room think this is a good idea? <laughs> Anybody that does it like well, I think it's an important question to ask because you're asking us to work together as a region. Uh, Mike and I have worked on a project for a couple of years now that we cross county lines. Uh, both of us would benefit. Uh, there's some things out uh, that we can benefit with uh, Berkeley County as well, over west of Mesa. And uh, this Franklin County sits right there. We have, that's our big stretch of I 70. Uh, but I just wondered if everybody was ready to do this because I, I think it is important that we try to work together. And not look at a project just in my backyard, but in projects other places. Uh, one project that spins in my head because it might happen could generate two or three hundred jobs in a couple of years. But it'll be a temporary job; they'll have to be gone. So, how do I take this project and use that influx of people that are going to come here and spend money and need a place to stay, and then they're going to go away? I don't want North. I don't want a North Dakota app, uh, where they had all those people going in for the, the pipeline, or not the pipeline, but the, uh, the fracking. They were desperate to get people. They were desperate to have housing for them. Once those things are in, you don't need all those people anymore. You need a very small staff to do maintenance. And this project fits in that as well. Uh, but you know, and what can they do? Well, if all these people come in, they need a place to stay. We've got a couple of people that are thinking about maybe we need a high-end RV park. Well, maybe we use that as the impetus and have them put that in. These people are gone. They still have the RV park. They can still rent these spaces out for seventy-five hundred dollars a night. It's not like I'm a hotel. So that project will lead to other things. And one of the things in Franklin County that uh, we talked about a lot is the importance of the increase in tourist uh, dollars being spent in the county. And uh, Mike's heard me say this too many times, but uh, there's a county I visit uh, every year, and uh, it's up north in Wisconsin. And a couple of years ago, uh, tourists left $360 million in that county. And that whole county is not here for the tourism. There's still farms up there and everything else. They found a way to make it work. 
Uh, we don't have people fighting farm machineries, but most of the farming is still done in the center part of the county. And so periphery is a big place. We have something similar with our one group one, 101. If you can keep the activity there, then you don't mess up the farmers. And so it's uh, it, it's a battle to, to try to get everybody together. But I think we can work on projects like that that not only have that project happen, but then can it help you do other projects. I think that's what you're looking for. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and I think, John, you, you brought up a great, great point with your initial question. Um, and one thing that we you know, not applying to this region in, in any way, but but when encouraging regions to say like, who are you really? Are you trying to, to shave yourself off to be able to capture you know more money for your region as compared to as compared to saying, okay, but who am I really tied to? Um, because you know what we heard from communities that participated in, in prior regional economic development efforts said just that. And that was by starting to work together and going through the process was almost you know, it was just as valuable as, you know, having access to, um, you know, resources to help actually move that plan forward. You know, that, that I think at, at its core and at its foundation is really what we're trying to do here is to get communities to start to coordinate and work with one another to help, you know, see how you know, making an investment in Franklin County can really benefit your Warren and Ripley and, and others. And, and because you may have somebody that goes to work in Franklin County, but then goes home to live in, you know, Switzerland County. Um, you know, it, it, there's not those, I guess, to like better term, kind of an artificial barrier between you. Um, and by again making an investment where those people live makes it more, um, you know, makes that company that they work for more able to be able to attract the workforce. So that, that's really what we're trying to do, and then you know, providing obviously uh, some really valuable significant resources as a as a way to make sure that that the process doesn't just stop at the plan the process continues in the implementation to ultimately help realize um, the vision that that your region puts together um i'll make a comment so as we've been learning about this opportunity uh just the conversation today has been great because there's not really this having these folks and this makeup of people in the room is, is good because there's not been many regional uh conversations we do have the southeast indiana regional planning commission and they've been they've been great but um as far as something specifically focused on economic development it's quality of life type projects um you know this is kind of one of our first forays into it and we know in other regions that have competed for regional cities in the past they're, they're much further along in this regionalism thing we're kind of just you know, coming out of our shell, maybe at this point, uh, about it. You know, we don't have a regional framework that organization and RDA set up. So, um, can you speak to or help educate our folks? You know, what that, as far as ready is concerned, it doesn't necessarily bode, bode badly for us. You know, this is the whole idea of the program is to begin fostering this type of regional collaboration. And just because we're not as far along as other regions, uh, it doesn't mean that we can't be competitive for this program. And, and, and Mike, I guess I'll say this, you know, there are some other regions that have an RDA that aren't necessarily fully more fully along in terms of regionalism mm -hmm. um, and, and really you know, engaging your communities together in a meaningful way. So, so I, I just say that because while in some places an RDA is great and in, in many ways it's a tool that can then be used to help you know, execute the project, implement it, whatever it is, because it has its own set of, of tools that, that it can be leveraged for. Um, but, but again, it's, it's not necessarily a clear indication of, you know, you've, you know, reached the pinnacle of regional collaboration. So, um, you know, I, I don't think that just getting started now is a detriment or, or will, will result in the state saying no, you're not ready. Uh, <laughs> um, not prepared to participate. Um, you know, as long as you know, we are able to see that that there is you know some real collaborative efforts underway. I think that that's I mean, really what we're trying to get to at the end of the day. Yeah, it doesn't strike me as a very rigid program. It seems like there's going to be a lot of room for grace within the within this. Uh, for good or bad, I realize that a lot of right. it just raises a whole bunch of questions. <laughs> there's been a lot of questions, but that's 
as I can tell the quotes, I think it's deliberately vague, right? In a lot of ways for, for those reasons. By getting everybody here to take this group, this step that we've taken so that shows the goal of the project we're trying to do. I think we need to get the commission forward. If you've had this meeting scheduled, nobody showed up. I guess that would be a good indication. We don't want to work together, but you know, by listening to where everybody is from, I think we can find some common ground. For our own, you know, we always come to the table thinking about our own cities and you know, the housing work. We can kind of lay that aside and think what it and try to come up with something that is good for all. I think it's a good, uh, good step. And I just, in my time of being mayor and you know, deal with the state, I think they're uh, really trying to get cities and counties to work together regionally. I think uh, that's something I mean, we, we have been doing that to some degree, but not as much as other areas have been doing. And they're the ones that can get home and go. And uh, so, even though maybe we're behind, I'd rather be, behind, be a little behind and trying to catch up than just to say, well, forget it or not interested. So, this is good for all of you. Quick question. Um, you talked about communicating the region, communicating with IEPC, especially as we develop match and, and especially as we develop projects. Are there IEPC um, contacts specifically assigned to our region and that um, may be able to mentor us a little bit on some of those things? Like, is this a good match? Is this a good project? How is this? Hey, that's a fantastic question and one that um you know you can always reach out to me directly um you know that's something that um you know with regional cities we did see as being really beneficial was to not have a project get to a point where you know commitments are made but then you come to the IMC and say hey can we use some of our money for this and there's some uneasiness with it um so you know me at a minimum we are also looking at um, you know, other ways we can engage members of our staff, it could be Trevor um, or, or other people specifically focused on coordinating with, with regions. Um, so, yeah, me, but uh, likely some other people will be directly involved too that uh, you'll have access to them. And, and I remember my match question was, you know, is it by project or is it the plan of soul? Um, you know, and, and one thing I want to stress is when we look at um, you know, our investment as compared to other uh, partners in this, you know, we look at the global universe of the plant, um, knowing again that different types of projects are going to have different levels of, you know, you know, match from the private sector or from other local public sources. Uh, so when, you know, if, if there is a project that's really important, the region says it's, it's of critical importance for your entire community, um, and it may require a one-to-one you know, -one from the local unit and from the state, we're not going to come and immediately say no. Um, you know, we're really saying, you know, use maybe some other projects that may be more heavily weighted one way or the other to help balance that out if you need to. Uh, but, but just because, you know, again, a project doesn't meet the match expectations that we've outlined itself, um, that's not a disqualifying factor for it. So in your slideshow, I see uh, a list of project ideas that you have. And I, I understand those were the ideas. Um, there's nine other regions throughout the state. Can you talk specifically about maybe one or two that you that you think are good projects for their different areas so you can get an idea of what to look for? And second question is, would you rather see one big, huge project or something maybe two, three, four, small? Projects? 
Two great questions. And actually, the, the first, I was, it sparked something that I was going to say, Mike, when you asked your question about, you know, do you come with new ideas or, um, you know, how far along in development do, do these concepts have to be? And one thing, you know, we are encouraging reach to be creative and, and figure out, you know, how you address you know certain issues in your region, uh, but we're also not saying you know completely reinvent the wheel. Um, you know, to use your prior experience to build on that, you know, take a, a you know program that may have proven successful um, in um, you know, Brookville and you know expand it throughout the region, possibly you know just as as an example. Or you know if you want to replicate a program that's proven to be successful at the state level um, and and essentially create one specifically for your region. I um, encourage you to think about that too, whether it be, um, you know, like for example, our manufacturing readiness grant program, uh, which we've been able to support. I think it's you know, over a hundred manufacturers around Indiana make investments in technological upgrades within their facilities to improve their operations and help them remain competitive. Uh, we could use some of these ready dollars to specifically target that for manufacturers in, in your community. Um, you know, as far as, you know, other example projects that um, would be, you know, of interest to us, um, you know, those could be some examples, but, um, you know, really others um, that, that could be used. And, and this might not be a perfect fit here, but, but is an example of, you know, pulling different stakeholder groups together in a meaningful way that, uh, really helps kind of transform you know, an area of the community. It's, it's a project down in Evansville uh, where they partnered with the utility, um, you know, the, the, you know, some universities in the area as well as a private developer to create a multifamily development that is essentially a living lab. And um, they've, they've been able to um, incentivize the residents to become more energy efficient by giving them prizes, by you know, finding people, turning down you know, the air on, on their phone. And, and it's really a connected environment that um, pulled together, again, a bunch of different stakeholders in a way that creates something that's really interesting, uh, but also meets a need to, to fill high quality workforce housing uh, within a downtown area of, of the community. Um, again, might not be a perfect fit for, for all, of, all of you here, but um, is an example of one that, that helps demonstrate what can happen when um, you know, different interest groups come together to help address the need. Um, another, I mean, it, it could be as, as simple as, you know, a, you know, a community park, um, one that, you know, again, helps create a high quality place. But, but if those projects you can be involved in, use it, uh, kind of a park and amphitheater project uh, that we funded through regional cities, was it's great to have a park and, and a, and a you know, community event space. But what I think we'd be really looking for is then how does the region plan to use it? And how is, how is it gonna be activated for lack of a better term over the course of the next couple of years, rather than just, we, we built a, a new community center and that's the end of the road. Um, if we really wanna understand how um, the city or town that, that's located in is ultimately going to, again, help use that to the benefit of, of their city and town, but also others around. Or population. Can you speak to the competitive nature of, of the ready program? Uh, can you disclose how many regions might have self-identified with that? deadline coming up July 1st and what we might be up against? Absolutely. So officially, I have in my inbox four, um, the seven counties in Northwest Indiana, the three that participate in regional cities in North Central, and then the seven um, in kind of along US 31, uh, Tipton, Howard, Fulton, Miami. I'm really starting to memorize them that with Indiana. Um, and then the five counties um, here, just to the west of, of here um, on southern, in southern Indiana, kind of the northern rural area, including Jefferson County. Uh, so those are the four that officially submitted. We, we kind of anticipate um, somewhere between, and it, catch me on which day, and, and recent conversations that I had anywhere between, I'd say nine to 15 regions potentially participating. Um, I think it really, again, kind of gets back to the point of how much do they try and um, to kind of break themselves down um, when, when thinking about what the region is. Um, so, but I, I'd say that with 
the understanding that even though there may be more than 10 with equal investments in each, um, it doesn't mean that you know the IDC will be able to work with regions across the state to, to understand you know, realistically what can be invested here over the course of the next four plus years um, and, and tailor the commitment to that need to, to maybe do more than 10 at the end of the day. And Brian, I, I can't remember if I answered your second question. I apologize if I didn't. You did. You gave a couple of examples. More questions for anybody? We'll let you kind of finish up and we'll let them forward a couple of remarks and then we'll finish up today. Oh, the, I, again, just want to say thank you. Um, you know, it's a particularly um, you know, exciting time at the IABC and, and you know, with this new initiative that, that we have been. Um, you know, asked to help lead. Um, you know, we see an opportunity for Indiana's communities across the state to, I don't want to say capitalize on, on you know, the, the positive um, economic outlook that the state had going into the pandemic and, and now coming out in a way that other states around the country don't have. Um, and, and, and making these investments in the short term, hopefully, um, you know, leading to, to some pretty substantial economic growth for the state. Here, of course, the next few years. So um, please um, you know, treat the IABC as a resource. And we want to make sure that uh, this is not just successful for a limited few number of places around the state. Uh, we really want to you know, try and you know, have this, this initiative have an impact um, you know, in every community in India in a direct way or, or indirectly by um, helping to, to you know, develop plans and, and um, highlight kind of the next steps for um, you know, what that community and, and broader region needs to do until we ultimately become um, yeah, as prosperous as possible. So, thank you all for having us today. We'll explain a little bit to, to the group of kind of how we came together. Um, there's a young man in the back by the name of Trevor Lane who's also with IEDC. Over the years, he's always encouraged us to do regionalism work. And we've been doing that since, SEEK has been in existence since we went back and looked, since 2009. It's five counties down here in the corner. And again, for this project, we believe Union County will join us for this, this project here. Um, we drank the Kool-Aid a long time ago, but regionalism for us makes us much bigger than we are as one little town of all is good, or a mile, or Liberty, you know, fill in the blank what little town it is. When we're trying to cast our net to Cincinnati and how this region got designed was just like the regional workforce board, there's three major metropolitan areas there. And how we divvied this up was basically where we get our news stations from. And all these counties get it from Cincinnati. You get to Decatur County, that's heading north. You get west of us, you know, with Trevor over there in James County, you get maybe in Annapolis and Louisville at times. So we are definitely Cincinnati. And in one of the presentations that was given uh, very recently, they recognized we are part of Cincinnati. So we came together as a region. So for us to pull our dollars together, and we've been on missions of Cincinnati site selectors over the years. So we had been working together as a region. But again, once we go to each individual county or town, you know, sometimes they, they don't live beyond our borders because they've got a lot of work to do as local elected officials to take care of their town. So we, as a group, designed this. It came up, it was kind of a natural transition for us because it's an IEDC program for us to kind of spearhead this, get it going, get it where it's at. And I'm going to ask um, for Mary McCarty to come up here. She represents Region 9, I'm sorry, so many boards. She was Southeast Center um, Regional Planning Commission. And through the partnership with, this, with them being our fiscal agent, we were able to check that box. The other box was being part of SEGA as a nonprofit. Um, John Bond is finishing that up. And there's also one for it's called Ready, SEI Ready. And uh, Mike came up with that. So it, it seems to be working. So, Mary, if you'd like to come up and explain a couple things, one is the comprehensive plan being put together, there was a uh, last week, there was basically a scoring process that was done. And Mary's going to have a couple things to say about that and kind of the work that she's done with us. So I'll kind of step out of the way. Thanks, Gary, or not. Thanks, Gary. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know which to say. 
Um, we, as a region, um, Southeastern Indiana Regional Planning Commission, we cover more than the Seagate counties and Union is not in our um, region, but we can partner with them for sure. Um, but kind of as we've been moving, we've been working with SEGA towards um, getting a project together and getting a plan together, giving the very short time frame of August um, to get this together, we thought it was very important to um, probably get a consultant on board to help us convene all the local units of government and private partners and community foundations and um, educators and get everybody in the room um, in a short time frame. Um, so last week we had um, organized with our Lidos, each of our Lidos, they had a representative from each county, except for Union, um, and we organized interviews with three different firms that specialize in this type of work, comprehensive planning, and, and um, we had real, a Zoom with each of those about an hour long interview. And it was unanimous. We kind of decided um, we had some people score. The scores came unanimous with one firm that's HWC Engineering. Um, so kind of where we are with it, we have not let them know that yet. Um, we're, <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna um, make contact with them hopefully early next week to try to see if we can you know get a contract together, kind of what our scope looks like, um, and help help us get, to meet that aggressive time frame. You know, within the Regional Planning Commission, I think all of you have faced this too, is there's been an abundant amount of money, which is not always, <laughs> it's a good thing, but it's left us all with a lot of extra work on our plates and figuring out the best way as stewards of that money to spend it. So um, if we felt it was helpful to have an outside firm to kind of help get everybody to convene. And the only thing I would ask you all is be open-minded through that process and also be willing to try to step up and come to those meetings. It's not going to work unless we have participation from, from many groups. Um, so I know that they're going to probably be getting meetings together really quickly and say, Hey, you know, can you come and, and we need to try to make that a priority in order for our region to be successful. So did I cover everything? Sure. Okay. All right. Any questions on that? I'd be glad to answer them. Also, I would like to add, we do have several, um, ongoing things I think can help us use this match. We have a, um, a broadband study that we've done for the region with Purdue Center for Regional Development, and they're also doing a transportation resiliency study for us. So there's several studies that, uh, on top of our comprehensive economic development strategy that we do that we can help pull together and lend. You can use whatever we have to make it successful. So I think that can help with the matching probably. Um, so we once we get together and we can get some organized we get the ball rolling, we can we're, we're blend that information to make this successful. Any questions? All right, good. <laughs> so kind of, kind of finish up and close up, I'd like to ask either John or John or Mike, if you guys would like to add anything to this. Again, what you, what you guys are seeing today is what we do is, is regionalism for the EDCs for a long time. And of late, we've, we've been having up, to, having up to three meetings at a time uh, during the week just to get to where we're at today. So yes, there's been a lot of work on the backside. We appreciate everybody's hard work. So reach out to your local economic development director, wherever that happens to be, or reach out to anybody for that matter, because we're all in this together as we move forward. Uh, Mark, would you like to finish up with any comments to constituents and otherwise? Yeah, Mike, oh. I said Mark yeah. again. <laughs> Twice today I've done that. <laughs> See, what are you looking at? Um, no, but there is a, a private sector support letter going around and a uh, local government uh, letter of, uh, what do you call it, letter of uh, commitment, endorsement, I endorsement, think, yes. for, for the regional identification. So if you work, you're a local government official, um, and you or the year, the board, council, whatever, uh, haven't had a chance to consider that, and you know, get in touch with the veto, uh, they can kind of walk you through that. Um, it's not a committal of funds or anything. It's right. again the, the deadline of July first is to have our regional identification in for Southeast Indiana, um, and so that's kind of priority number one is putting together the region, making sure counties, cities within the region are, are mostly aligned, and uh, having that as our evidence for the IEDC to look at when we submit uh, the application for our regional identification by July first. So if, if you haven't seen that. Uh, or you'd like to? I do have a few copies here I can pass around, but um, I'm pretty good if you have those. And we 
we dig there by Zmail. <clears throat> so what we'll do is, is we'll break that down. Um, then back there, we'll break it down in a spreadsheet, get it to all the leaders. Then we'll get it to everybody for the PowerPoint presentation today. And that will also give you access to your local Lido. That's going to be, you know, the point person. If you have any questions, that's some, we want to kind of keep this going. So I want to thank everybody for coming out today. Spend as much time chatting. Again, this is all about, uh, you know, coming together as, as a, uh, there's one big happy dysfunctional family over time. <laughs> so again, thank you very much for everybody coming out. Thank you, Gary.